Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So Luna's here today saying hi. Um, so basically today I'm going to make the Dua Lipa Brit Awards 2021 gown. Um, I just like fell in love with it when I saw it. It's so cool. And I just wanted to look up like how I'm going to pattern it, you know, just based on the pictures. And I remembered this great pattern I have from Angelica Clayton costuming that had a really similar bodice. And it looks like the um, skirt is pretty simple. It's just like, and then it has some draping on it. So I'm like, you know what? I can make it. I'll make a really bone bodice. But I am going to change the colors around a little bit just because I don't have this color silk and I have so much fabric. Right here you can see the original um, sketch, which I think is really cool, from Vivian Westwood. Like 18th century, but I kind of feel like the bodice isn't 18th century. It's kind of earlier. Kind of is more like si late 1600s, but it has that like rock and roll cool feel and I thought I can make it. Here is another kind of similar dress that she had for the after party. So I looked at that too for like how to pattern it and stuff like that. Vivian Westwood has done 18th century meets modern for a really long time. And I always loved her designs. I mean, they're so cool. How can you not? And they always have like a cool bodice that's really structured and then just a kind of, you know skirt that's billowy or something making it more modern and she's done multiple times in her career these really cool silhouettes and in different colors than you would expect and different um styles but they're all kind of inspired from 18th century which i really love so I'm going to show you the Helena Bowen Carter dress that she wore to some premiere. I'm not even sure which one. It is Vivian Westwood and it has like a really pretty pale pink. And I was like, oh, you know what? I have a lot of this pale pink fail. I think that's some around it. File fabric, silk fabric. And that would work really good because I wanted a little bit of structure in it because I needed to like drape properly. So as you can see here, this really cool dress. The skirts are going to be like that. The skirts are going to be like the Dua Lipa one. But look how pretty the color is and everything. And I have this really cool gold that I can use for kind of the overlay netting thing. So, he so here is the pattern I was talking about. It's Angela Clayton costuming McCall's pattern. It's like this princess dress. I made it one time before. And it just has a lot of boning in the bodice. And I think it's perfect for this outfit. Now, I'm not going to show you every single detail of the dress making, but here are the pattern. These are the pieces for the dress. I used two different layers, a stiffer cotton and then like a thinner cotton, and I just sewed them together. These are all the bodice pieces. So now I'm going to make the boning channels, and I just go off based off of the pattern where they're going to be. I wanted to use two layers, one thicker, one thinner, because I want the boning channels to go through that layer, and then I'm going to have this silk outer layer go on top of it. So it's like a lot of layers with this gown, but it gives its, its structure and its actual shape underneath, so you kind of need to have the layers and stuff like that. And here I am just sewing those channels down. And I just did this for every single one of the pieces that I have here. So here I've cut out the actual fashion fabric, which is the silk. It's a light pink silk. And first what I have to do, because I have the overlay, because in the original dress it had this netting kind of overlay. And I want mine to have this um, really nice gold overlay. And what I have to do is cut out each one of those and sew it onto the fashion fabric. So the fashion fabric is going to be two layers then at that point. So here I am just sewing on the fashion fabric layer with the, uh, that netting kind of, kind of layer, which was kind of hard to sew because it's very slippery and it's not really a conventional material that I'm used to working with, but I just went slow with it and used a really big stitch for our basting. You could hand base this too, but it's easy for you just to do it on the machine. Okay, I don't know if I'm in frame. 
so next what I do is like now I have the pieces um, and now I'm going to attach the like boning bit part to the fancy silk part because I don't want like the bones to show so uh, I did it with this piece I'm gonna do it with this piece so here I have this piece here's the boning and I'm putting the like ugly side that I like drew on on the inside so me -e -e. And I'm going to line that up. Actually, it's kind of smaller. So, I'm going to basically sew this whole thing together and do that for every single piece. And then I'll have all the pieces ready. Also, do you like my hair? And my double piercing. So now I did it. So, like, the little, the backs are connected to the fancy front. Now I'm going to actually start putting the pieces together. So this is the middle piece. Um, and I'm going to give myself quite a bit of, I think it was three quarters of an inch. Maybe I should cut this. Alright, I'm going to cut them to be the same size because right now, see how it's like off so I can't really tell. For some reason I cut this one really bigger, but anyway, um, I'm going to cut them all so like they're the same size because they're like, this one's bigger. Um, and then I'm going to put it all together um, to get, get like the shell of it. Peace. And make sure to iron it. As you can see, I flatlined it, which means that I put all the pieces out. It just makes it easier to adjust it. Make sure to iron it out to get those seams looking really nice. Okay, so I made the shell. Now I'm gonna put the boning in. So I have to, got this from China, here's Amazon. Um, so it was pretty cheap. Okay, <clears throat> so basically, I'm gonna get the boning done. Do, 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 do. So I have like a lot of channels I have to do. Um, and then with every piece of boning, I'm gonna burn the edges. Fire starter. Have you ever seen that movie, Stephen King? Kind of weird movie. Anyway, I'm gonna burn the edges. Just so it's no sharp edges. So I don't want it to like poke through the fabric. And then I'm probably gonna sew these channels down and then um, put bones in them as well. So see, now it's nice and soft. I mean, it's not soft, but you know what I mean. So now I'm just make, putting those boning channels in, watching Fringe. Actually, no, no, I was watching, um, what's it called? Imposters on Netflix, which is a really good show. I would check it out. It's really funny. And it had a lot of twists and turns. It was really good, so check it out. <laughs> Now the time has come to sew down these channels and I just hand sew them because you can't really do it on the sewing machine otherwise it's going to show them the other side obviously and I'm going to put in bones in those channels as well so make sure it's like a nice stitch. I just used a whip stitch just to make sure it all goes down. And here is the kind of shell made on the mannequin so you can kind of see the shape that it's starting to come and it, the bodice itself already has a shape the only thing i have to do now is i mean i have to do other things but the main thing i have to do now is create a pattern for the collar kind of it the collar bit kind of was just a big swoop looking thing and i'm using this really cool silk lame material i don't know if it's actually silk because i only got it for seven dollars online so probably not but it looks really pretty so I guess we're going to say it's silk. But what I did was just measure the like neckline area and then I just created a big long piece 
the length that I wanted and use that as my pattern. You can see right here, so it's just like out of a tissue paper. Covering all the bits I wanted to cover. Now, it doesn't look exactly like the Dua Lipa one because I have pictures of the back and it only went to like the side, but I kind of just liked it covering the whole thing, so I went with it. And here I made the color two layers and I turned it inside out and I just ironed it and now I'm just attaching it to the bodice and I'm hand stitching it on the other side so you can't really see the stitches because I have plans for this gown to do a labyrinth ball gown afterwards with it so stay tuned for that. Um, so I wanted to just kind of stitch it on and then later I'm going to gonna actually like adjust it and see if I want to keep it. So I'm just hand stitching it at this point, which is nice if it's like curved to do hand stitching. And you can see here how it's stitched. I didn't finish the other side of the seam because it's not going to show, but you can see kind of where it's hand stitched on. It, it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't really look good at all if you look at the other side. So it's just to get it on there. And now I have to attach to finish off the sleeve part. I'm going to do bias tape around the edge so I'm going to attach it go to the sewing machine sew around it and then hand stitch it down to the other side I have to fold it in different parts to make sure it fits around nicely it's kind of a pain but I, I like how it looks some people don't like how that looks but I feel like it's an easy way to like finish an edge and make it look nice and I got this bias tape from the store just pre-sold but you can make them you can get these bias tape tools to make it yourself and then I just hand sewed it down with whip stitch on the other side. Like you just fold it over and then you hand sew it. So I did that to the bottom and also the, um, the armholes. Now I'm going to show you guys how I do the grommets. I decided to put grommets in just because it's kind of easier to sew it up and the hand eyelets take a long time. I basically use the owl, it's called, to make a big hole big enough to put the grommet in. And I got this grommet tool, it's like a hammer one. You can get like a pliers one, but this is the one that was available at the store. It was like $15 from the craft store, basically. So it comes with this little wooden piece. You put the piece that has like the long part in the back where you want it to show. And then you put that little piece down. The piece that goes top is like the washer bit and then the one that it has a round edge over top facing up and then you hammer it down and then it gives you a really nice finished grommet on both sides so I just did that I put them one and a half inches apart for a really nice looking finish depends on how you guys like it like what you guys like in terms of look some people don't like the metal grommets and now time for the skirt I just based it off this old vintage pattern, just made a really simple underskirt because I knew based on the drawings, it's like a simple underskirt with kind of like a flap making it asymmetrical. So here's the simple underskirt mock-up that I'm going to use. And then I saw, you know, it was really short with a flap over top and then it had like the draping. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So I, if I make the simple skirt underneath and I just put little darts in it based off the pattern darts and put a zipper in. Now here's like the finished skirt. I'm not going to show you everything about the skirt because it was really simple to make. Um, I just finished it off with some bias tape on the top. And I added the, I had some lifting material from the bodice part that I'm going to add to the top to kind of bring it together. And all I did was just whip stitch it down. So I whip stitch this layer down. Because also you're not going to see the top of the skirt anyway because it's going to be under the bodice too. So. And then I wanted to add this big piece of silk that I had to give that drape look. And I just kind of looked where I wanted to go and kind of draped it on there and whip stitched it on. I knew that I wanted some pleats in the back, so I did go to the sewing machine before I took this big piece there and just sewed the drape, the pleat part part, but the rest is draped on. And 
And then here I have the silk lame. I pilled, pinned it on and draped it how I wanted it to be. And now I'm just whip stitching that layer on as well. And this, this layer was like really, really long. So to kind of match the Dua Lipa one, the other pe silk piece was like a little shorter. So I'm just sewing this on how I kind of saw it look, how it kind of draped. It looks really pretty, right? I like this color. I like this, this look a lot. And then the last thing I did was just add some closures because I wanted the drape part to go over the zipper. And obviously I have to make sure I can get into it. So as you can see, I just added some closures there. And then I have the zipper already. So as you can see, that's kind of how the closure is going to work. But you're not even going to see it, so it doesn't matter. And that's it for the skirt. It was, it's a pretty simple skirt. I mean, the skirt took me like one night. And the bodice took me, like, a while. <laughs> so here's just the preliminary try-on in the apartment. I think the, the how it was draped looked really, looks really cool. I didn't even um, lace it all the way up, but I think it looks really good. Here's the final ensemble with the added, you know, accessories and everything like that. And I think it turned out really, really pretty. Mm -hmm.